Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> this is such a rush lunch, and I hope you are still digesting. Um, so I'm just going to show you a lot of pictures, and uh, this is a case study. So probably will keep you awake. Um, I'm, I'm Y C Chen uh, from the sociology department here, and this is uh, my partner uh, Mirana Maisito. Um, we have. Uh, uh, we have two roles here uh, as, uh, in this project. One is, uh, is a scholar and the other one is an uh, activist. So, um, so we will probably present this uh, from a more like activist point of view and it's to see how right to the city <coughs> movement as a practices and how, it, how, how, how we do from the bottom up. And, and luckily this is a very rare uh, so-called successful case one out of a million, uh, so uh, maybe <laughs> it's a bit more cheerful, but it's a very small case, so that's why it's successful. If it's a big case, then there's no hope, right? So um, we purposely choose a very tiny case to make sure that it's success. Um, because we, we do um, presentation a lot together, and uh, we have a kind of division of labor. So if there is a more social science kind of uh, pre uh, conference, I will take the lead, and then, but during the Q&A, uh, both of us will answer the questions. Uh, if it is more humanities, then Mirana, Mirana will take the lead. So for the efficiency of time, so I will, I will, I will do the uh, presentation here. Um, and also, uh, and um, we have also, this case is that we, we don't only like preserve the, the uh, working class uh, neighborhood and where they can stay, but also we have run a lot of programs, social programs and cultural programs. And uh, now Mirana is actually the chair of the program committees that run the programs. And so, if we, if, if we have time, I will show you some of the, uh, the uh, cultural programs that we are running uh, at the Blue House. Also, this is an image of Blue House, and this is the artist's idea of Blue House with a lot of people. So this is a Blue House with, without people, but uh, this is the idea type, and this is what we want to build Blue House as a commune. And um, so preservation, uh, preserve our neighborhood movement as a resistance to new liberalization of urban space through urban renewal. For us, um, Rights to the city means the rights of the underprivileged people. We don't care about the rights of the developer. Uh, so uh, it's really that's uh, the rights of the people who have no say and who have no uh, bargaining power is the one that we are focusing on. Uh, the rest, uh, we don't care. <coughs> and um, so, uh, so we uh, quickly talk about the new liberalization of urban space, uh, preservation as a resistance to urban development. And then the, the main part is really the uh, empowerment part. Uh, how, how the mobilization from the, from the bottom um, through coalition politics and, uh, and how, how it works. Uh, this is uh, actually started in 2006, so until today, so it's <laughs> already uh, seven years, yeah. and it's still going on. And um, so very quickly, just for one slide, to talk about the return of the capital to the cities. Um, Hong Kong is a very much a developers led cities. Developers control everything. Uh, in, fact, in fact, they control the politics as well. Um, so a lot of policies uh, come out, you can actually uh, think that there might be, must be some chit-chatting between the developers and the officials in one of the uh, jockey club uh, parties of, on the golf course. Uh, and uh, so the real estate capital is expanding and then uh, it's a very Good expanding through new town, new town buildings in the uh, 60s to 80s. Uh, we built a lot of new towns in the new territory. So the expanding of the capital, and by the end of the 80s, we have exhaust the momentum of this uh, developed capitals. Of course, then logically they come back to the cities to tear down the old neighborhoods uh, for this called creative destruction. Right? This is the you know or rain gap. Uh, this is the, the, the familiar universal. <laughs> Uh, sorry, so I don't want to compete. Ah, sorry, just repeat, sorry. Uh, um, and urban renewal, of course, is an uh, uh, evil empire. <laughs> they destroy everything. And um, so um, well, from an activist point of view, we really don't think that there's any good about URA, even though compared to private developers, they do compensate tenants. If it's, uh, if, if it's urban renewal done by uh, um, URA, tenants get get compensation, or if they are poor enough, they go to public housing. But if it is by private developers, get nothing. So, so we all, you usually struggle, right? When, when we see the case that it was the private developers doing the um, urban renewal, it says, 
lesser evil. Why don't we use the URA, <laughs> invite URA to do it so that the tenants actually get more, a big compensation. So that's the dilemma that we are facing all the time. Um, a lot of, uh, I think um, the previous uh, paper already laid down what URA is. Uh, now they are focusing on this demand oriented, uh, um, demand oriented developer, de development, which is a bit better than the top down version of it. Um, yet, um, we actually suggest a community led urban renewal. But then the, uh, the, the government come up with a proposal is really just uh, um, uh, owner, owner led development, which is very different from our, our ideas of community means the tenants. We use uh, a lot of cases, uh, for example, in New York, the, you know, tenants and, and owners association. This kind of combination is what we are thinking, but then the new policy come out is totally different from what we are thinking. So the tenants' uh, position in the urban renewal is actually weakened uh, through this um, um, reversal, uh, sorry, uh, revisal of the URA policies. Um, we are looking at the uh, Wan Chai, which uh, some of you might be familiar. This is a site where uh, uh, Professor Tan is very familiar. <laughs> so it is a site where, um, and, uh, where uh, a lot of urban renewal are crazily uh, built. And this is not only the um, apartment buildings. The, the current renewal is a lot of them are this uh, so-called suite hotel. Um, so it's for, for the company and for this uh, long stay. People who, who stay here for, for a long time. But uh, so it's a uh, hotel development because of the, uh, of the tourism. Now uh, it's a, a lot of demand on, on Hong Kong Island. So a lot, before that, it's a lot of them is turning into condominium. Uh, expensive uh, apartment now is more on hotel. So, so this is uh, the landscape right now. And the site we are looking at is going to be the, the lowest building in the whole neighborhood. Only four stories compared to this uh, 50 or 60 stories. Just want to uh, quickly look at the usual circle of development. And it usually starts with the uh, um, annou announcements of uh, uh, redevelopment by, by government, in this case, uh, sometimes by the private developers. And um, so the government will um, ask, you know, you draw a line and this place will be redeveloped. Uh, so they have very strong power because they have this uh, land resumption act, which is very powerful. They don't have to get 60%, 80% or 90% of agreement. They just do a red pen and draw a circle. And then this, all these places become to the government. This is how strong, how powerful the Hong Kong government is. And, um, and this uh, URA actually have this red pen uh, in, in their hand. So they don't really have to, uh, this is a, a, the, the before the, this is the usual practice that URA is doing. Now, under a lot of criticism, now they, they go for this uh, demand-oriented thing. They try to gather you know, enough uh, support from the local. Um, it's a bit better, smaller scale, less uh, disaster, but uh, still, I mean, the weakest, weakest person, especially the tenants, are still get kicked out. Um, so the, usually the protesters, the victims, the people who don't want to move out, I have to emphasize, urban renewal, there's always half of the people happy, half of the people unhappy. So people are, it's not like everyone wants to stay in the, in the, in the run, run down apartment. Just, uh, don't make me wrong. There a lot of people are happy with, go, uh, you know, uh, move out, move out of the place. And so, but I'm, so I'm looking at the 50% of the unhappy people. Mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, whether they have the, have the rights to, to choose to stay or to relocate in the same place, right? This is, where the focus is. Um, happy people, you know, good for them. Um, <clears throat> so the object uh, is always uh, people who want to stay in the neighborhood for all kinds of reasons. Uh, and, uh, and, and so this uh, existing lifestyles, they want to stay there because they, their, their parents have been staying there, their grandparents have been staying here for a long time. They go to the same schools, uh, they have the friends, uh, networks, uh, business is all here. So it's uh, the usual one, the social and business networks are here. Um, and uh, street life and the culture here, and just, they are just used to here. So usually, uh, it's the you know the old, very old um, uh, families, second, third, fourth generations. Those are the people who I really insist on staying. If they are, you are just uh, you know casual movers. You know they move here for a few months and move somewhere else. Those people are not the one that uh, insist on staying. Uh, and uh, from the activist uh, side, they are usually. Uh, use all kind of channels they can use. And one is the government channels. Government have a lot of uh, this consultation, and most of them are fake. 
but uh, still they, they go to this uh, consultations and uh, uh, planning town planning board procedures and voice out or sometimes they stop the meetings uh, through direct, direct actions and uh, just to uh, expose uh, get exposure of uh, um, of these uh, unjust processes. Alternative proposal now with uh, the coalition with uh, some professionals they will um, with, will sometimes plan alternative plan. So not just say no, but we say yeah, we have alternative plan that can be win-win, and you know most of the people can uh, continue to stay stay in the in the new plan. You know, we we abolish part of it, and we don't abolish the the whole thing, and we go slowly in the process that you know that uh, more people can be included. So this is uh, um, now uh, the the more common practice now. Before it's just say no because uh, professionals are not in on board now. More more sympathetic professionals are in, involved. Uh, and actions uh, means uh, usually direct actions and usually uh, cultural activism used a lot and uh, guide the culture towards to, to uh, like a public education and um, I have more example later carnival uh, style street festivals like uh, at the site of uh, resistance and people's theaters performing art installation poster YouTube stickers and so on and so forth because all the resistance take at least like two three four five years so it take a long time so. In between, uh, you know, quiet place, or you didn't, <laughs> you have to do something right, to continue to attract uh, uh, attention on it. And uh, usually, at the end of the um, struggles, that uh, everything's failed, and uh, occup occupations of the site, uh, government buildings, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, will, will you know, it means us, uh, in the mean the stepping out of uh, of the protest usually happen at the end uh, when everything failed. Um, government response is that uh, usually they will. Um, they will just uh, through legislation. Uh, some some of the case, if it is big, they will have like, like railway constructions, and they will just uh, through the ledge call with enough pro government uh, politician, they will just endorse and pass the budget and to tear down the whole neighborhood. And uh, and then police uh, is coming in and bulldoze the whole site. And and they will usually give you something in in return. Say you know I'm not destroying the whole thing, but I'll give you something you know some fake heritage or. Or small houses here and there, and then uh, higher compensation, and this to just like to make you less unhappy. Um, so this kind of ABC, right? Uh, government uh, government announce a thing, and then you have like huge protests for a few years, and then and then you lose out, and then you give get a few uh, <laughs> few things. Uh, uh, a, a, a typical case is really the Litton Street case, which I. I think some of you might, might, might heard a lot about it, so I will just uh, go, go through it uh, a bit quickly. Um, so Lidon Street is a, is a two stories. Um, uh, this is a Lidon Street sign. It's, all, it's empty already. Now, uh, now it's already abolished, and now the new, new building is already built. This is like five years ago. And um, it is it's a printing district. They call it Waiting Card Street. It's because it is a printing cluster. Um, why there is a concentration of printing clusters is because in the 50s, 60s, uh, the British governments are very afraid of uh, these protesters uh, printing illegal posters and flyers and distributing, influenced by the Communist Party, right? So they, they, they put them together so they for better control. But this uh, historical accident turned into a clusters of <laughs> very vibrant. Uh, uh, industrial uh, uh, clusters and uh, very flexible. Uh, this production front shop, back factory, um, that's like the Italy kind of thing. Uh, very competitive, creative industries. And then they they don't only print uh, just a usual business card and annual report, but uh, wedding cards, red package, calendar, brand names. So um, for the parents in the in the fifty uh, uh, in the uh, if you are in fifty years old, sixty or above, uh, a lot of them actually have their wedding card print here. A lot of them. Uh, here, so this is a, uh, one of a nostalgic uh, uh, place, uh, and it attract local and international tourists as well. And so, um, so this is the uh, product, and they are very highly designed and customized. You can go there and design your own uh, own uh, wedding card, and then because it's very flexible, the, the master is just at the back with the machine. So you can say, I want to design this, and then they can just ask the master to come out and say, Can you do this? And then yes, and then go back, and then three days you get the card. So this is the flexibility that you don't have right now because with the new buildings you cannot put machine anymore, right? So, so by by turning down the old buildings, you actually also 
with, uh, with building out of new buildings, the, the new building court will not allow uh, factories and commercial use anymore. So, um, so that's why they, they want to preserve some part of it. It's not just the building they want to preserve, they want to preserve the rights to have a machine in the streets. Right? So that's uh, very important to keep the, uh, the industry alive. Uh, so this is a protest and they are famous for have these uh, yellow banners flying over the place. They have a book, documentary books and uh, CDs uh, document the whole, uh, the voice of the uh, people who get evicted uh, by using Chinese, unfortunately. Um, objective is really um, one to be relocated locally, store for store, apartment for apartment is the, is the one that, why, why Lee Li Dong Street or Wedding Car Street movement is so important because they really set out the agenda of what is protecting uh, my neighborhood movement is. They set the tone and the, and the major objective. Number one, if you want me to go, we want to have relocate locally. The new buildings have to, uh, have to uh, give us the same space. We don't want compensation. We just want a space in the same place that we can stay. So this is the demand. of. Uh, um, the other one is the preserving the uh, social and business networks. Of course, uh, you have been in business here for 30 years. All your local networks and clients are here. If you get relocated, you are dead. So 90% of the, of the uh, printing industry actually go out of business uh, 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 after they get kicked out of this place. They struggle in other place for a few years and then they die. And, um, and, and the third one is to preserve the local culture, the street life, you know, uh, the street that we can actually walk. Because uh, the URM model is to build a mall and then there's no more streets. And then the, the streets, the original Litton Street will be inside the mall. So that's, uh, that's, that w w that's what they are against. You know, they want the shop to face the, face the road, right? The old usual ways. So you can walk on the street and then you can say hi all along the way. It's not in the mall, right? So that's uh, preserving the street life. So these are the three major elements that really set the tone for uh, preserving our neighborhood movement that actually happen in other places. So in other places where there is uh, against new urban, re urban renewal, you already know very well what they want, this three thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and uh, through procedural justice, alternative proposal, and, and, and this uh, cultural activism and direct action. Right? And so this is uh, the Litton Street. Uh, it's, it's, it's the first advocacy planning. They actually have uh, pull, pull out some money and, and, and uh, hire planners. Uh, to build, uh, to, to plan this, and actually they get an award uh, in the uh, planning association in Hong Kong at that year, the, the, the first award. And uh, is that you, you preserve the low, low rise building in the middle, and then you, you increase, you move the plot ratio from the middle to the end, to the end of both streets, so you can build higher. So there's a way to like, um, you know, remove the, 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 the rights to build high, to move to the end. So you can preserve the middle, right? So that's a compromise. And the government actually uh, adopt this proposal, except that you tear down the middle as well, because they want to put the parking lot at the, at the end. So at, at first, when, when URA announced that they're going to, uh, to build the, the dumbbell <coughs> model as well, they announced on the newspaper, I was very happy and called the activist and said, we won. And they say, look clearly, it's not, it's just the shape looks like now. So the government adopt our, our shape but not the content, yeah. <laughs> so this is how bad the government is. Huh? <laughs> and uh, um, the government cultural response is really uh, much more, and uh, you want a wedding card, right? Wedding card street? Okay, I'll give you wedding card street, right? So this is the government stretch, uh, sketch of what it is. And uh, now you, it's already built. The whole thing is already built, and it's much worse than this. Uh, <clears throat> the government response, of course, number one is use force, right? The force, uh, you know, the police, uh, the, the state have the legitimate force, right? And then you use it, uh, which is the land uh, uh, resumption ordinance. Uh, all owners who refuse to leave will be sued by uh, illegal occupation of government land. By the time that you are announced a place with a red pen, this is already government land. So it's a, time, it's, it's a matter of time that you negotiate compensation and then you know, shout a few slogans and then you're going to move. <clears throat> and the cultural response too is like, okay, you want a marriage? theme, right? Wedding car is a marriage theme, so it'll give you a marriage theme mall, right? <laughs> so in the future, we'll have a, a, a theme mall called uh, Together with Marriage, right? Um, of course, the, 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 this, this has already changed a few times, but this, the marriage theme is there. And of course, it's a very ironic, right? The industry cannot move in anymore. They say, oh, I can let you rent, have a priority, the, orig uh, the existing uh, Printing industries can have the pirates to move in, but 
with market rate, which is like like ten times more than before, and then you can, cannot put a machine, so what use? So it's really an irony. You have power to move in with market rate, uh, <clears throat> so that means nothing. Um, so this is uh, so basically this is the replacement of Wedding Cut Street. This is the old old town, right? So it's already all this urban renewal thing is already surrounding it, right? So there is a hybrid rain gap, right? This worked pretty well with this case. <laughs> you are know, in the middle of rain rain gap, so you you must die, right? So this is right. So this is a uh, um, this is a very typical case, and I, I want to show this typical case, and because uh, in the Blue House, uh, uh, very tiny, uh, much smaller, uh, with uh, twenty households. Uh, uh, Lee Dong Street had 230 households, so this is like one tenth, right? So I give you the scale of it, so, so that uh, the successful is not like, it's a very tiny, tiny token successful, right? Uh, so we want to break the cycle and say, you know, government announce it and then we protest and we lose. We want to say, uh, government announce it, we protest and then we win, right? So, <laughs> and then, um, but, uh, sorry, how much time I have? Uh, 10 minutes. Oh, okay, all right, good. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, right. So this is the real, real, real things that I'm going to talk about. And um, so this is a old tenement house, and uh, this is a blue house, yellow house, and the orange house. Uh, it's uh, in the 1920s. It's a, a classical uh, uh, a tenement house, uh, and then I, I will show you the picture later. So these are, uh, and this is uh, in the 50s, 20s, 20s, in the 50s, and there's a compound in be between. So this is a place where uh, URA announced to preserve very unusual and and also because we understand because uh, they have teared down so many places in one chai so one of the mandate of URA is to do preservation there are four R there right and one is the preservation so it's still an R but uh, the second R so the preservation and um, so they, they have to choose a token buildings and then the blue house has been chosen luckily and but they just want to um, Turn the blue house and the yellow house into a Chinese medicine and tea museum. That's the only, you know, in their head they don't have much brain. I think uh, so. They can only think of very, very small things that they can uh, imagine, which is a uh, museum. And uh, and the orange house is because it's a post-war uh, building, and so they have to be uh, more ab abolished. Right? And um, everyone have to go out. Right, the 20 uh, plus households have to have to have to be out of it because you are you are in the way of museum. Right, this is a very. Uh, Wonderful tea museum, which no one has any idea what it is. Um, Mirana have uh, actually have a great good critiques. Now we drink tea in tea house. Why do we need a museum, right? <laughs> we Chinese medicine. Half of the population go to see a Chinese medicine. So what do you? He just got his medicine. Yeah, he just got a medicine, a Chinese medicine down there. So yeah. So why do we need a Chinese medicine museum? There's a live museum everywhere. Uh, yeah, they, they don't have big brain. Sorry, huh? I'm really. So I, so I have to say that I'm speaking from an activist point of view, so that uh, scholars should not behave like that. Um, and uh, <laughs> so they just give me give me more the, uh, space to speak. <laughs> so this is uh, all, all photos of uh, of uh, 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 blue house. Uh, actually, it's not in blue, and, and uh, the blue is actually a, a very um, government's uh, intervention, uh, which is very bad. Um, because Chinese hate blue. Blue color means like a funeral color, funeral color like ghosts. Like, um, so some of the residents actually say they want to turn back to the original color, which is like white or you know beige. Yeah. Or anyways, uh, uh, so in 1986, it's still, it's still uh, beige. And then you have blue house, and uh, one of the I, I don't have the time to talk about the story. So it's just that government run out of paint. Because uh, this is now uh, government has already occupied like two thirds of the blue house, and then they have to uh, maintain, uh, renovate the place. And so, one 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 time they run out of paint, and then the only the paint they, they get in the storage is blue, so they have to turn the whole thing blue. Um, so you see, even the color you cannot control, right? Uh, as a tenant, right? Uh, <coughs> All right. Uh, so it's uh, located. Uh, blue house is located near a very old old uh, uh, vibrant market, which is also preserved and. One of the uh, things that of blue house is like this old tenement house is mixed mixed use residential communities a lot of union 
used to be a very hardcore union uh, uh, struggle place in one Chai because the uh, coolies and uh, uh, are here. Um, community and uh, commercial and cultural places are here. This is the uh, clinics, a uh, very famous one too. And this uh, this blue house has this uh, veranda, which is uh, very unusual as a uh, you know, uh, canon. And this is uh, people sit uh, uh, along the blue house, and then you have St. James Settlements, right, which uh, you are in. Uh, uh, as an uh, employer. So uh, we work with a very big uh, um, uh, social welfare organization there, and so they organize a lot of... Uh... This is uh, Mr. Yan. Uh, as, uh, he's an engineer and general manager, actually, um, but retired and now uh, not very rich anymore. Um, so he, he's, uh, he's one of the tenants. Uh, they have been here for many years, uh, 50, 60 years, uh, very old tenants. And uh, so just to give you some of the pictures here, um, uh, this is uh, pretty run down. They have to need some, uh, but this wooden stays and sky, sky well and for the light to come in. And they have all, all, all kind of uh, these illegal uh, cubicles to increase space. You can see that a lot of, uh, we want to preserve all this uh, thing. And important thing is people. So like Mr. Ye is the uh, second generation and the third generation is here. Uh, this is seven, 80 years old now. Mr. Chen is now like, third, he's a third generation by the way. And Mr. Yen is here, and they, so they are very old tenants. They, they they cannot, you know, after so many years, they are still tenants. That means they are not they are just a sport. So the, the empowerment stage, the first stage is to organize the um, true St. James settlements uh, through the this social work, wonderful social work uh, organization, and then we uh, set up uh, these uh, rights, resident rights groups to fight for the right to stay in the blue house. Okay, all right. Um, and then, um, and then since then we have these weekly meetings. The Mirana is here, and my photographing. Uh, so, um, uh, so we have these weekly meetings every week. Every week uh, used to be on uh, Wednesday, and then on Thursday, non-stop for for the you know until today. Until a few months late, a few months ago we, we stopped. So we talk about all kind of issues. We just keep to need to uh, give the residents hope that we are moving, we're moving on. So the regular meeting is important. If there's nothing we can do, we just write, write later to the government, right? Just do something, right? just to keep the hope up. And then do a lot of public education. And then this Mr. Chen, you know, do the culture tour to let people know that why we, why we are important part of the museum, right? We can talk about stories too, right? And uh, we do a lot of street festival, which is all open out to the neighborhoods. And people come in and and you know, have these traditional toys, how traditional toys are, are made and uh, how they play. And we have this uh, street performance, uh, uh, criticizing URA, just preserving the jumpy buildings without people. And this is social workers, and this is a residents pretend that it's a jumpy. And um, we have the public uh, exhibition, uh, even during the Queen's Spear Preservation Movement in 2007, they have uh, do the public uh, preserve, um, exhibition there. And uh, we go to town plan, this is, we, 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 we film this uh, secretly. It's a town planning board meeting, and we went there and then uh, talked to them, say, look, look, we are human. Preserve us. <laughs> right. Um, so, and then uh, very, uh, the second stage is that uh, um, when the gum, uh, when at first the residents are very reluctant about the idea of preservation, because preservation is all about the hardware, never about them. So later on, after a while, we said preservation is about social networks, about life, about uh, you know street life, and then they slowly uh, get the point, and they say, okay, we want preservation, and then they change the tone and said, now we want to have a resident uh, 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 preservation guideline. And they come up with seven guidelines, uh, uh, preserve the historic high site, not individual buildings, uh, preserve and enhance community networks and local identity, tenants can remain with living condition improved, uh, prevent gentrification, uh, preserve traditional industries. Uh, of, of course, gentrification works have been brainwashed for a long time so that they know. Bottom up management with resident participation, uh, I mean brainwashed by us. Establishment of preservation fund for long-term uh, sustainability, and then we they use this guideline and then Go to the, go to get public support and uh, in uh, Moncourt Street and and uh, after a long uh, a stretch of time, half a year of uh, preparation, and now they are ready to see the bureau and the development bureau, and, and they actually come to meet the meet the uh, meet the residents. Saying we have to prepare, the the, the residents are so prepared that all the social workers and activists are all out of the door. They are nothing. Uh, no one, no one. Uh, all resident only. They can speak to the development bureau with one voice. That is what the power of organizing. <laughs> so there's no like diverse ideas. We just want that this is our idea, six point. You just do it and then we let you go. Um, and then, then we, um, 
and, and then the government agree that uh, the, the, the resident can stay. And then we step up and say that, okay, now we want NGO to run the, the place. You don't know how to run it, we run it. But we, don't, we run resources from the government. And then, and then we, we, uh, the third stage, third stage is really the participatory planning stage where uh, uh, this used to be an informal coalition, now become a, a real coalition, uh, it's become a company. Resident rights groups and gen settlement, culture, community culture concern is really the small NGOs that uh, fund, uh, run by me and Mirana, Heritage Hong Kong and other, and other uh, uh, private preservative fund. So um, we actually, uh, our main, instead of a museum, we run a house of stories, which is uh, very different from the idea of museum. But uh, if I have time, I can show you some of the things that we do. Um, so preservation meeting with different diverse group of people. This is with writers because of uh, Mirana's connection with writers, so we have writer groups uh, thinking what we can do, like a lot of this participation planning um, of how we can uh, put uh, tenants and all the other cultural pro social programs together with new tenants. So there's a lot of conflict uh, need to be resolved. So a lot of uh, this uh, conflict uh, um, and, uh, negotiation uh, happening. And this is some, some of the, uh, uh, so at, at the compound there, we're going to be a, a, like a community Film, open film theaters, and uh, there will be uh, used to be uh, just a, a lockout uh, place. Now it's going to be open out for for other people to use. It's a public space now. And so, uh, lastly, if I may, uh, okay, all right. Um, just uh, just to uh, to show you that why this uh, bottom out participatory process uh, is uh, is actually go not just uh, preserving the rights, but actually go against new liberal uh, new, new liberal. Uh, uh, urban urban development. Uh, our program like vegetarian restaurants and dessert house, right? Right to work, right? We talk about not just right to stay, but right to work. So we have to um, design some of the some of the uh, social enterprise that the uh, tenants, the, the working class, can can actually get higher. Not like the high class restaurants; they they don't even fit in the tuxedo, right? Uh, so I have to um, very low low, uh, low lower gentrification factors. Unskilled residents can be participate and be higher. Strengthen local culture. And uh, the, the government uh, uh, is used to be like this very high high end thing, exotic restaurants, and and the, the government and, and opponent actually talk about kung fu museum at one time, and then the resident says, you know, if I sleep, and then the next so playing kung fu, you know, how does it work? Nah? Uh, and uh, of course, then uh, and uh, so for us, it's really a community center, and. Um, Half a story is the one that we are uh, we are really running now. Uh, everyone has a story to tell. Public space, inclusive space, discourse for local identity, mixed income, mixed use, respect tenants' heritage, flexible usage, commercial culture, and community. So just to return the tenement house into the original mixed use uh, stage, all right. And government is really just themed commercials and you know high high income single use, right. So for us, really the um, we really move from just a right to uh, we sustain the right, and then we propose a plan and force the government to accept it because the government have no choice. Um, and then, uh, no choice because there are other movement at the background that is very against the government. So government have very, a lot of pressure that they have to give you a small token to, as, a, as a exchange for you know, less pressure. And then we uh, purposely uh, put the blue house not as a very, uh, we are very worried about that it going to be a gentrification factors that will lead to gentrification in the neighborhood. So we purposely want to make a very low end designs and you know um, very just uh, just low end just to uh, avoid gentrification of, of the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, the rest is just the house of stories, the programs that we run, uh, you know, music, open music and uh, um, uh, drawings at, at, uh, in front of it and storytelling, uh, public arts. Um, so on and so forth, but this everyone can do. Ah, okay. Thank you. Well, we, uh, we have a bunch of good questions for me. Thank you, Juan. Huh? May I answer to the story? Around that area now has a lot of gentrification, including the, the, the former Wan Chai market. Right. has been actually demolished inside and only the facade outside of the Bauhaus uh, uh, construction. So, so may I ask how are you going to resist those 
我我以孫老師呢，佢哋被他打聲得我將啲嘢將嚟到，我哋以為試試咁。I think、um, to be realistic, I think what we have done is、um, to slow it down and scale it down as much as possible. Most of the district has been already uh, uh, um, uh, uh, redeveloped. So what happened to the market was at first the government、uh, rehoused the entire open market. Wet market into a indoor market, and each store is given a like a prison cell place. Now,、uh, what happened is there was resistance in helping to preserve the market, and they did participatory redesign of the market. The government has to make it very open, uh, 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 spacious, and they、uh, take down all the walls and they redesign、uh, the way the, the the lanes are. So. So it's to make business possible, more pleasant, and and after that re,、uh, redesigning of the indoor market, they were willing to move in.、Right? So there is like no 100% resistance and no 100%、uh, success. And also we、uh, we successfully blocked the killing of the outdoor market. So although most of the people、um, hawkers were moved indoor, the outdoor market stays. Okay,、um, and we block the uh, uh, high-rise condominium from、uh, killing the market in order to create、uh, access to their parking lot, to the the car park. So,、uh, in in some ways, I think the blue house community and the market community mutually support each other, and we did get back the street and we did get back the market. Limited, we cannot、uh, completely、uh, stop it.、Yeah. But we don't want to like enhance the process. Hi, what else is happening right now? I mean, do, are you guys involved? Like, how many people are involved? Can you give us a little feeling for? Yeah, like, are there other buildings that? So, to um, we have those.、Um, I think the, for the first time in Hong Kong,、um, we built a new consortium of social workers and then、uh, you could say、uh, preservation activists and and.、Uh, uh, Professionals, and we actually have the residents rights group still in this consortium as a re registered、uh, a unit, and then、uh, residents will be able to elect representatives into the board of directors and you know community concern and all the other places、uh, working together will have elected members into the board of directors. It is a community managed、uh, place.、Uh, we get seed money from the government, but、uh, once all the renovation. Uh, and improvements have been done. Then we we have to fi be financially self-sustainable.、Um, so it, for the first time,、uh, the residents will participate in a community-managed、uh, institution. Um, and uh, how we have social enterprises、uh, that are not only creating jobs locally, but then、uh, because it is a vegetarian、uh, and handcrafted traditional food place. So we work with organic farmers locally. We work with a lot of uh, uh, community uh, uh, women's groups and so on that that produce all the、um, you could say part of our menu comes from them. Right? They 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 sell us the things that we use in the in the restaurants and so on. And it's also a way of employment that、uh, women who want to work part time can can fill out the schedule. Right. Uh, instead of having to work 12 hours of the day,、uh, we we ask famous chefs to train a whole lot of people in the community to maintain quality level,、uh, quality control, so that a lot of people can actually get employed here and and elsewhere in our production chain. And and the House of Stories、uh, works very well in bringing young people back, and they work with. The local residents in researching on Hong Kong culture, and then finding ways to create、uh, programs, exhibitions, class, and we take a lot of um, um, projects from、uh, from kindergarten onwards to university、uh, research interns.、Um, we take a lot of these people in, and we we sell them our programs, we sell them our training, and then、uh, we train the people, and we bring in、uh, researchers. And to continuing、uh, the story, of, of, you know, from, you could say a more community-driven kind of Hong Kong House of Stories. And this model has been working. So one thing we're going to start a, 
uh, East Kowloon House of Stories in an other new urban redevelopment uh, district. Uh, um, <laughs> we are a chain store now. Liam Cattle Depot, another artist village. And then uh, we want to go in to help this community threatened by urban renewal, like many years before the policy is being set on stone. So I, I think we have a head start this time by, by jumping ahead of the policy timeline. Slide up with the donkeys. Oh, donkeys, okay. Yeah, that's it. Could you explain, could you explain the donkeys? Oh, that's it. Because Hong, uh, three, th more than three million people in Hong Kong live, more than half of our population live in public housing. But actually, it's very, very tricky how you actually get uh, a unit, right? So um, this is housing. It's one of the most expensive thing. Public housing like carrot. Yeah, carrot and stick. Yeah. So. Um, so in our House of Stories, we research a policy and its myths. And uh, artists make it a very, very interesting, funny, entertaining uh, experience for people to understand how they're being tricked by the whole myth of public housing policy in Hong Kong. So um, and all schools and, and uh, the public, everybody can come to experience um, this issue. Right? So, in a sense, it's kind of a cultural activism and, and, and a very soft way. And, and we get a lot of uh, very conservative schools and teachers springing and students here um, for this kind of exhibition. Yeah, here it means that uh, we should have public, uh, uh, public housing everywhere, in every district, not just a very far away district. So we want to yeah. change the The policy. right to be in the right center of the, the city. city means that the public housing should be in the heart of the city. So, so idea. Uh, um, in Hong Kong, the poor people are, are dumped to the uh, far away supply towns and it's right to the center of the city right. kind of. Uh, uh. So this is really the right of the city. Theme. And the next slide actually <laughs> is it's how, uh, next one. Uh, the um, it, no, too fast. I, I put it at the back. So, yeah, that, so actually we have children uh, writing letters to the uh, chief executive who, who runs Hong Kong, right? And then um, the t artists teach them how to uh, turn it into a pictorial uh, piece of uh, work of art. So um, through play, we actually get a lot of these uh, letters written and we send a whole bunch of letters to the government and so on. I think we need to move on to get to our finale. Um, thank you very much.